What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Movie Talks, Andy Picasso, need for your movie news, movie reviews, and more. Episode 107, Lawson's lost the tab, so he's a little bit flustered. We're filming on a Saturday night, okay. a, little bit, a little bit different. So we are cooking. We've got Beetlejuice, 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 or just Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I actually thought it was I refused. Be- I thought it was Beetlejuice too, but it's actually just Beetlejuice, yep. Beetlejuice, which was yep. confusing because I was like, I'll get into it afterwards. And then we've got that, <laughs> we've got the Tulsa King, which is uh, Sylvester Stallone playing a gangster. Oh, 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 he's cooking, he's cooking. And then we've got a Jack of <laughs> Whitehall, who is off and running. He is now father, and it's him going through a fatherhood with his father. So, yep. yep, Lawson's the demographic for that one that they're aiming at, right? <laughs> but it's only one episode about being a dad, really. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but jumping into our, well, we've actually got some big movie news. So Michael B. Jordan is set to direct and star in the Thomas yeah. Crown Affair remake. I don't remember much about the original, but I do remember. I don't know it. it. Okay. Yeah, well then. I have, uh, I have no understanding of it, but people are excited. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty big. I'm trying to remember. Peace Brosnan, was... right? Yeah, it was Peace Brosnan. Yeah, I remember watching with mum. And mum was watching it because Peace Brosnan was in it. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. what I'm thinking of it is. Yeah, I never I yeah. I mean I know it, but I don't I don't know it. Like I I know nothing about it. I have no idea what it's about. I have no idea what genre it is, nothing. Mm-hmm. It says it's a romantic heist, so yeah. From memory, he steals paintings, like art paintings, like high okay. end paintings. Sure. Yeah, that was um, a long time ago. And then... Yeah, uh, you're right. A very rich and successful playboy amuses himself by stealing artworks. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So, hey, cool, I'm yeah. down. And then we've got Stephen King's newest horror adaptation is Salem's Lot. It has a new trailer. So Lewis Pullman faces of vampires in mostly yep. Stephen King's new one. And then we've got Hayden Christian honors the best Jedi Master. So yeah. All that. Hayden Christian and Ewan McGregor uh at the Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony. Kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Kind of cool. We should also mention that this week, speaking of Star Wars, James L. Do- Jones passed away. Yeah, it was sad. Man, that, of course. That man's got a voice. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's more Lion King to me than Darth Vader. I've seen more. Really? Okay, that's fair. Well, I didn't watch. I didn't watch the episode like the original Star Wars movies until mm. after I watched the uh, episode one. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was a bit older. Whereas, like, Lion King, I grew up watching pretty like heavily over yeah. and over and over again. Yeah, and Aladdin. Do you so know if he's going to be more faster? Is he voicing me faster in the new the new one? I'm not sure because he voiced. Uh, he voiced Mufasa in the the fucking live action in yeah. air quotes live action Lion King. Yeah, but, but I think because it sets it's a set earlier. It's a younger Mufasa, so I don't think I don't think so. But mm, okay, maybe because he sounded so old yeah. in the live action Lion King. Fair. Um, yes, <laughs> I did see something about uh, Scar's tail where it was like. They were telling the tale of Scar, and I was like, I've never actually thought about that. Like, why they were different color? Because Mufasa yeah, helped that's, him. That's sort of being explored in the new Mufasa movie. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of cool. Always wondered uh, what dumb. was going on there. Yeah, but it looks better. Like, sorry, we don't have a tangent now, but a big part of what was wrong with the I forget. I, I want to say what year it is, but I forget what year it is every time. But the live action um, Lion King. Big big problem with it, with it was that the he John Favreau kept saying he wanted to look like a documentary and he's still like a documentary. You can't use unnatural lighting or facial expressions because it's not a documentary. And they've fixed that. Like these characters have facial expressions and like raised eyebrows and they're a lot, lot more animated, okay. which is a huge step in the right direction. But it's also a story that no one cares about that I don't think needs to be told. And I think yeah. it, I'm like I like when villains are just villainous because they want power. And this is going to like try and justify all of his backstory and whatever. 
I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I don't know. Aaron Pierre is the voice of Mufasa. Okay. Big shoes to fill. Big shoes. Absolutely. But uh, Venom, The Last Dance, has Tom Hardy battling several uh, symbiotes. I actually quite like the Venom movies. I know you do. Yeah. I like Tom Hardy. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. I'm very surprised seen... that he's at Venom, but... I mean, he's now also... He fits it better than uh, the guy from that 70s show who was playing <laughs> Topher Brock. Grace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of my favourite... Him as Venom in Spider-Man 3 is so stupid. It's I don't know so... why they cast him. No. Eddie Brock's meant to be like a, a, a unit of a bloke, like an athlete, and they picked the most scrawny, dweeby bloke he was going yeah. around. Like, part of part of the jokes and the running joke in the 70s show is how fucking lanky and scrawny he is. And then they cast him as Venom like five years later. <laughs> well, um, I don't know what was happening there. We've got Dennis Vill- Villamonts. I'd have no idea how to pronounce his last name. The director of June. He is... Oh, sure. Bell and Weve. Yep. Dune 3 will be his last movie in the franchise. So he'll be done with the sure. Dune franchise from that. It's fair. Uh, I can yeah. see how it'd, it'd be pretty fucking like heavy to work on. Oh, it'd be, be massive. Yeah. It'd like, take up so much of your time. You'd want to start branching out and doing different things. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, we've he got... has a lot of passion projects. So I'm glad that he's letting himself venture away from it. As successful as Dune has been. Oh, yeah. And then we've got Steven Spielberg and Judd Apto team up for the Coke versus Pepsi movie. So this is a Cold oh, Wars stop. at Sony. Stop with these franchise movies, these fucking food franchises, Cheetos and fucking Pop-Tarts. Now Coke, Pepsi. I did not know this was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I Who did you say? Uh, Steven Spielberg and Judd Apto. Judd Apatow. Oh. Yep. Yeah, right. Could be could be good, could be terrible. Who knows? Apatow's the guy who's then like knocked up and 40 year old virgin and all that shit. Like that's you know, yep. his bread and butter. Yeah, Coke right. and uh gross. <laughs> uh Spider Man four um at Sony and Marvel. It's happening. So at the end of sure at the end of Venom. Two. It was a, a scene of Toby. Um, I want to say Toby Maguire, but it's not. What's the the young lad? Tom Holland. Tom Holland, uh, Spider Man yeah. on the screen. So I think it's finally going to bring Venom into that universe because Sony owned the right to Spider Man and then gave. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a mess. It's such a wank around. <laughs> like, it's so dumb the way that Spider Man has been handled over the years. Yeah, I don't know. And then we've got Happy Gilmore 2 is officially in production, so mm-hmm. that's coming to Netflix. Did I you know feel that? good about it. Mm. Yes, I did. Okay. I don't feel good about it. I love Happy Gilmore, but I don't know. I don't feel good about it. No, we'll see. We've got Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice bag, the $145 million opening weekend. It was always going to sure. do it. It was always going to do a big, big open. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. glad. And then Orlando Bloom is trying to get Legolas back in the hunt for Gollum, so he's up really? to jump back in there. Yep. Um, there's the a hunt for Gollum. Is, is that a project? Yeah, yeah, we spoke about this last week. So the hunt for Gollum is the new expansion of the Lord of the Rings franchise. I thought we talked about the anime last week. No, there's a hunt for Gollum. Oh, my bad. Uh, yeah. And the last bit of movie news, you know, remember when Sonic was first announced and they showed the first renditions of Sonic? <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Yeah. And then, the, yep. and the, the public went mad and they changed the animation. Yep. Yep. They want the same thing to happen with the <laughs> Minecraft <Black>. movie. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the, the like, this is what we did last time. We can do it again. And it has like the side by side of yeah. Sonic old, Sonic new. And the Jack Black old, Jack Black new is like, <laughs> he's all like cut up and placed all blocky and looks like yeah. intentionally like shit. But I, yeah, I, it's funny I, as hell. I would want that. Like, if you're going to yes. do Minecraft, do that. Like, do yeah. something ridiculous rather than just throwing. You see, Long hair on Jason Momoa and being like, "Ha, ah, this is funny." Yeah, they it's, they it's tried that. Just a star power. What, what was that Netflix one where they were like, "Ha, ah, he's meant to be the funny, comical one in the kids' franchise, uh, like Sweet Dreams yeah. or something." 
or something dumb like that. Yeah. What was it called? Now I need to find out. Yeah, I remember uh, it was terrible. And we're like, why is, why is he? Slumberland. Been? That's it. I said sweet yeah. dreams. It wasn't too far off. That's fair. My brain said dream scenario. And I was like, no, that's Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I saw someone um did like a, they remade the trailer, but with actual Minecraft graphics and Minecraft animation, like the Minecraft cartoons that have come out you know like the straight streaming services movies that come out and shit okay and uh yeah it's way better yeah right. everyone's like why didn't they do that and it's it's star power yeah. which is dumb because star power worked just fine for not star power sorry but like video game animation and stuff worked just fine for um super mario movie and they had plenty of quote-unquote star power yeah look at the lego Charlie stuff Day's that does Luigi. so well yeah oh, incredibly so and fucking amazing animation yeah, like all the, I don't think there's a bad Lego show. Like everything I've seen, like from Ninjago to mm. Jurassic Park to yeah, Scooby. We we're watching Scooby Doo the other day. I have a Lego. Is Scooby Doo Lego. I've not uh, seen that. Yeah, um, I was watching with the kids yesterday, but my daughter got That's scared, awesome. so we had to turn it off. No, oh, like, it sucks. Yeah, sorry, daughter. Yeah, oh, she's fine. She's fine. I think she just got <laughs> bored and wanted to do something else. So I was like, yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. I don't think you're scared. I think you, <laughs> I think you're pulling out. Yeah, when I was, I used to get by the most random shit when I was a kid. Yeah, it was like a pumpkin with it's on fire. She's like, this is scary. But I was like, five minutes before that, I was like, are you scared? And she's like, no, I want to watch it. And then it came on again. She's like, I'm scared. And then she's like, can we, can you help me with my wheelies? Uh, you, know the <laughs> you know the shoes with the yeah, yeah, the, wheelies. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah. That's so good. All right, let's jump into our first one off that the ranks, life. which is Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So I went in yep. this with not seeing the first movie for God knows how many years, 15 years, 10 years. Yeah, okay. I think for me it's been like 20 years. I could not remember a thing. I was like, what in the hell is no. happening here? Like this... I feel like you have to rewatch the first one to work out what the hell is going on. Cause I was like, I don't even understand how they're going to get Beetlejuice back. Like, I don't understand what happened to him. I was like, what is going on? So I had to yeah, do Yeah. He was trapped had, in the model. Yeah. I had to do a Google search and I was like, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> who are these people? Why are they here? Yeah. Whereas yeah. I watched, I watched the OG Beetlejuice the same day. It's probably right. about two hour gap between watching Oh no, no! I watched original Beetlejuice, and then I watched three episodes of um, Fatherhood with Jack. And they're about what forty the minutes apiece. Yep. yep. So whoever that was for a couple of hours, and then I watched Beetlejuice too. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it they're very similar, like very closely timed. Yeah, right. I, I'm so glad. <laughs> I feel like that would have helped heaps because it's it was definitely has skewed my opinion of of the film not having the context of the first one. Yeah. Because I'm like, what in the hell is happening? <laughs> but I remember seeing Tim Burton saying that he will only do a sequel if Michael Keaton will come back to do it. And then Michael 100%. Keaton was like, this is the only sequel I'm interested in. Convenient. Yeah. So I read that worked, too. It worked out all right. <laughs> but I'm going to let you do the honours because otherwise I'm just going to bumble around because the old Deets family... I don't even understand where you, you haven't guys... got the deets on deets. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. So yeah, this is uh, the second. I'm just gonna call it Beetlejuice too because saying Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is annoying. Why is it? Yeah, this is Beetle... Are they gonna do because Beetle... they're gonna Beetle... do a third? Beetle... Yeah, because yeah, okay. his name three times. That's how he appears. So yeah, fair. It's, it's the setup for a trilogy. I mean, if they don't now, it's like, what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this is set, did they say exactly how long? But this is set like 25 to 30 years after the original. Um, first one was made in 1988 or released in 1988. And this one, obviously, is 2024. So I, I guess like the same amount of time has passed in their world, but whatever. Well, it's, <clears throat> Pardon it's me. An, it's enough for her to have a daughter and her daughter to be old. She's at school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. General. Her daughter's Tager. a high schooler. Yeah. Yeah. At boarding school? Look like a boarding school. She's in yeah, that room and stuff. Uh-huh. 
Also, um, so William um, Defoe was he in the original? Was it like no, no. Oh, okay, I was like, what? So and it's Willem. Yeah, William or William. He's Willem. William. He's always William to me. <laughs> I know you said it multiple times. <laughs> uh, you yeah, know he's not the original, and I don't think he need to be in this one either. <laughs> like, I don't know why his character was in it. Supposedly, uh, who did I read was meant to be first choice for Willem Defoe's character. Oh, I forgot. And then they, they end up casting Willem instead. Doesn't matter. Uh, so this is set in the future. So after a family tragedy, three generations of the Dietz family return home to Winter River. Still haunted by Beetlejuice, Lydia's life is turned upside down when her teenage daughter, Astrid, we named her a daughter, that's such an old-fashioned name, uh, accidentally opens the portal to the afterlife. Uh, so yeah, at this point, uh, Winona Ryder's character, whose name is Lydia, uh, she's older. She's grown up. She now has like a TV show where it's like a medium show where she connects with the dead. And who was the know, Australian bloke out. that did that? Who had the TV show? I remember. Do you remember? He was like he used to just he had three sections, and then every time he was like, "I'm channeling someone, yeah, mum or grandmum," and it starts with a A, and no, no one will like, oh, maybe it's yeah, actually, yeah, it's actually a, it's actually a C. And then someone would be like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> that's, uh, what, that's, that's what that reminded me of, that whole like psychic show. But she did like more haunted David houses. Stevens? Oh, I can't remember. I remember I, I watched either. it. And then dad used to bag it. And then I was like, no, it's real. He can talk to ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so. know. I, I remember that. I remember being on TV, but I remember anything about it. Yeah. I didn't watch any of that. I just remember him asking random questions and I was like, yeah, oh, how did he do it? <laughs> it's uh, what do they call it? There's, there's a name for when they can like read the crowd and, and ask the right questions to get the right answers. Scan. Um, yeah, but there's a, there's a special <laughs> word for it. Like uh, it's, it's relevant. Um, so yeah, Lydia's older. She's now on TV. She's a celeb, but she's like got a pill addiction. Uh, I thought that there were meant to be like pills to help her like psychosis or something like that. But the way that her and Rory, her, um, her partner, or whatever you want to call him in this, her betrothed eventually, oh, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no more pills. You can't take any more of them. And then she does. And, he, and then he does too. So like, it couldn't be anti anxieties or anti psychotics or whatever. Cause he's having, I thought they were like, maybe he's addicted to pain. She's addicted to painkillers or something. I don't know. It's not really explored. I thought they were the same because, like, he met her in the same like group that she went to. Like, they were the, mm-hmm. they were addicted to their like psychotic meds or whatever they are. No, like... the group they met in was when they lost their partners. Uh... It was like a a recovery service for when you lose, like a you know, a, a talk group for when you lose your husband or wife. Right, I just read That's that as met. like recovery, as in like recovery. Right, right, yeah. Uh, so yeah, they, she sees her mother who, um, Catherine O'Hara, who's the mum in Home Alone. Um, mm. she meets with Lydia Dietz and is like, your dad has died. He died in a plane crash. Well, no, he didn't die in a plane crash. The plane crash landed in the water. So did he die of drowning? No, he didn't die of drowning. He died of being eaten by a shark while he was <laughs> in the water after a plane crash. And it was all stop motion. Yeah, that was just a throwback to Tim Burton artistic style. They were just like, let's do a oh, easy yeah. way to do this. Like, well, and it's, it's a way of filming the father without including the actor. Yeah, because he's a now like a racist sex offender of some description. I don't know oh, the full really? details, but oh, really? Yeah, the actor who played the dad, um, Lydia's dad in the first in the original movie, is now like going through all that contra- controversy and stuff. Oh, right. I'm not sure if it was kids. I'm not sure if it was sexual assault, rape, or what it is, but he's yeah, right. retired from acting because he doesn't want to be in the limelight. Right. I but, did not know that. I just thought yeah, it was that's a, why... a choice, an artistic choice. Yeah, yeah. which is fair. I mean, it worked on you. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's he's in the movie a fair bit, but... Later, when you see him in the movie, he's been eaten by a shark, so he's been like, "There's a big chomp taken out of him." <laughs> this is... 
<laughs> yeah, squirting, squirting blood, blood when he talks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's strange, but you know you can see why they did it. So then she has to go back to the um the murder house or the the haunted house or whatever from the first movie, um, where they grew up, and that's where she starts seeing Beetlejuice more and. General Ortega gets into the uh, the the attic where Beetlejuice is in, in the model house, and he, she's like reads a piece of paper and she, she says it twice and it's like oh, okay, so one more time and and she goes and meets this boy because she can't ride a bike. It and took she... so long for Beetlejuice to come out. It like, doesn't the original too. I know, but like we already know Beetlejuice before it was like mystery of like what is happening where's this going yeah, true. like we already mm-hmm. know we already know that beetlejuice is hanging around like they alluded to it for almost 15 minutes before we actually got to see him start interacting yeah this movie's pacing is real bizarre it's one of the things i wrote in my um review on letterbox as well because like the, the whole start is pretty slow and it feels like it's setting things up but nothing really eventuates um, and then, like in the second act, there's twists and reveals and multiple plot points that tie up really in a like really quick succession, and then it sort of just ends. Um, yeah, it's strange. The pacing is real bizarre. I, I don't like it. That's my biggest problem with it is the writing and the pacing. Yeah, it was it was a bizarre choice that they went with. Like mm-hmm. was it was it kind of oh we we don't have that many ideas of what we're gonna do to the point where we want to create this sequel, but we it don't felt like have... the opposite. It's like they had too many ideas because they have multiple plot points that, like, spoiler alert, I suppose, but it seemed really obvious from the beginning. Um, Astrid, General Tiger meets this boy. Um, and from the beginning, when she's interacting with him, there's a few little things that are said that I'm like, he's got to be a ghost, right? You don't see, you don't see his parents' face, and you're like, well, there's a big reason for that. I wrote my notes, he's either evil or he's a ghost, and then it turns out he's both. Uh, but like that, that plot twist happened so early that we didn't get really time to form an opinion or think otherwise, so it wasn't really a reveal. And then his his arc wrapped up pretty quickly, and then moved on to Winona Ryder and her boyfriend or fiance's arc. Like, I thought it would, it would be nicer if, because Beetlejuice wanting to marry um, Lydia, you know, wanting to get self-serving, because he wants he wants to join the real world, and that's how he's going to do it. And also Rory wanting to marry Winona Ryder for his own sort of nefarious plot. They could have been intertwined better, but they felt like two separate stories. But they're very, they're such similar motives that they could have been wrapped up in a much, a much nicer way. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like the the boy was even General Tager's whole part in it was like, I don't even know why you're in this. Like, it yeah. wasn't like you were only there to set up the the third film. Like the the end scene is just seemed to be there to set up for a third film. I was like, oh uh, yeah, probably. I was like, oh okay, you're there, and then. The boy, I was like, how's this happened? Like, even I guess spoilers, like he was he was a ghost, and then it turns out it's uh conveniently that the only people that can see him are this family, the Deets family, because yep. uh, they have yep. some some supernatural ability, Gift. some psychic, mm-hmm. whatever. And then they were like, oh, he's evil. Oh, he ended up killing lots of people. And then, oh, see what I got you to say. You drew a chalkboard. Oh, that's lame. There was like this whole boring sequence. Ah, you gave your soul over. Dad, help me. Oh, and then they got married. Who got married? And then General Ortega got married. Um, she got married. Yeah, like she, she ran off to... with the other bloke, with the the ghost boy, when she resaw him afterwards. Did I miss this? I feel like you did. And then she ends up, spoiler alert, at the end having the baby and it's Beetlejuice, like a mini Beetlejuice. Oh, right. Oh, that whole thing. Well, that's that's all in a dream. Yeah, but like... That was all in a writer's dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're right because that happens so quick. It's like we're skipping so far ahead in the timeline. General Taker grows up, gets married. Yeah, you're not wrong. 
Yeah. Um, and then she has a kid, and then a Bill Juice baby pops out, and it's all a, a scary dream when I write her. She wakes up twice. It's because then she wakes up next to Beetlejuice, Juice, and then she wakes up again. Um, yeah, it felt weird. Yeah, I, I was like, what is the point of this? Like this plot. I think it's meant to be, like you said, set up a sequel because the film starts with her sort of seeing Beetlejuice around the place and like he's almost stalking her in a way, like from the from the afterlife. Um in the same in the same way he is doing at the end as well. So it's I think it's it, like I said, it's not a sequel in the fact that he's never gone. Beetlejuice will always be around. He's like connected to her sort of thing. Yeah. Even in her dreams, I guess. So that's how I sort of read it. But yeah. But it did feel weird. They presented so much information all of a sudden. Like there was nothing happening for a long time. It was just like her seeing a bit of bit of juice, yeah. then coming back to the house, then putting a sheet over the house to mourn the, the passing of the father. And then all of a sudden, after like the first hour, and then there's 37 minutes left, and it's just like, here's everything. It was, was a lot. Like, I was like, well, what in the hell was happening? Like, we've got Beetle... introducing new plot points, and yeah, we've got Beetlejuice's ex wife coming out of nowhere. And like, some... yeah, for she she really did not need to be in this film. No, every main like... character, including Beetlejuice, had their own like arch rival in this movie, and well... they had to like deal with them in a weird way. And yeah. yet, like, it was, it was too much, it was too much. It, that's what I said. I think. I think it was less to do with they didn't have enough and I feel like they had too much. Like they were trying to do all these individual things and they all felt like if this was like a, a mini series instead, it would have tied together better. But in a movie, it's just too many things happening and it doesn't follow the actual structure properly. Like I think that's, you know, the pacing is garbage. Yeah. Like it was, it was bizarre. And like she just popped out of nowhere and the, how we watched the film all of a sudden, it uh it cut the Spanish <laughs> at the introduction. I was like, is this an artistic choice? This is intentional, on, yeah. On, on how they go. But like I was like, oh, why is this in here? Like, why am I getting the backstory? Like the whole purpose. I want to see more Beetlejuice. I want to see Beetlejuice interacting with yeah. the people in the world. I don't want all these random subplots. I didn't mind the little scrawny head big body blokes, like an army of them. Yeah, yeah. They're great. Yeah, like they're cool, yeah. like do what we wanted, like what we liked in the first film, like the sandworms and Beetlejuice going Beetlejuice-ness, wherever, like spreading his juice, chaos. Going, going nuts. That's what I want. I don't Spreading want... his juice. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that ever again. <laughs> like, like I don't want all these little tiny stories all leading into one. Just let him go nuts and let him be chaotic and fun like it was in the first film. I don't think he's in this less though. The first movie, he's barely in it too. I read something online that he's in 17 minutes of the first movie and it's about the same in this one. Really? I don't think he's in this less than the original. It felt less. But the original's, the original's tidier because there isn't five stories happening at once. Oh, fuck. Well, that might be the issue then. Um, But, you know, that's, that brings us to what the positives are. Michael Keaton is fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. Beetlejuice okay. is so goddamn fun. Yep. Like I, I would watch, just like you said, just like scene after scene of him just doing the most chaotic, bizarre, gross shit. And this movie leans more into sort of body horror and grotesque and sort of that disgusting realm a lot more than the first. The first was pretty gross too, but this one leans into <laughs> leans into it even more. Yeah, it was kind of almost like it. Sam Raimi style, like the over the top gore. Yeah, there are times. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Definitely, um, which I think helps it say contemporary. Like a you know, the old one is pretty timeless as well. But in terms of what's what's considered shocking in the eighties, is very different to what's considered shocking in the twenty twenties. Um, yeah, I think that Jenna Ortega fits really well. Uh, she obviously works really well with Tim Burton, and I, I really like them working together. I think that she's a good fit. Um. And it didn't feel, as much as the pacing was pretty shitty, it didn't feel like a tacked on movie. Like it, it, the characters felt like they felt in the original, but also kind of in a bad way. Like I feel like Winona Ryder's character, or I shouldn't say Winona Ryder, Lydia, I feel like Lydia 
she hasn't developed or grown. She doesn't become a woman. She acts the exact same way in this movie as she does in the first one. And like, I know I've changed a lot in 25 fucking years. Mm-hmm. Doesn't feel like she has. No, I don't know. It was bizarre. I guess when you're dealing with your mother's like a, well, a psychopath, like she's just, she's all over the place. Like the mum, dealing with the mum, dealing with fame, dealing with Beetlejuice, the supernatural realm. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Are you going to, you kind of trapped in that, like that state of just surviving? Like what's going to happen next? Like, yeah. Or is it meant yeah. to? Yeah. Because we're not really presented with any new information of her besides that her, her partner died and mm. now now she's got rich and famous, but the mum's just a lunatic. Yeah, but she's supportive. <laughs> yeah, but she's a lunatic. She wants what's best for her daughter. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's fucking like, yeah, unhinged, but not in like a narcissistic way. No, I don't feel like. No, just loopy. But I don't know. Like I did not enjoy this anywhere near what I enjoyed the first one. Like I wonder if I watched the first one again, no. would I enjoy that as much as I did back in the day? Like I watched it a few times back in the day over the years. It's just been a, such a large time period of since I've seen it. Yeah, I. I'm glad I rewatched the first because, you know, it puts this in a bit of perspective. But it's strange, like, as much as I spent the last 20 minutes ragging on this and I, I, I feel like the pacing, like my notes ready, my, my main three things are the story leads fizzle before they gain traction. The twists don't work if they're predictable uh, or if you reveal it too soon. Stop motion is timeless. Mid-budget CGI is not. Some of the CGI in this didn't look very nice. And... I wish they just did more. Like I know that Michael Keaton and Tim Burton both said they wanted still to do lots of practical effects and puppetry and stuff, which they did. Some of it looked fantastic, but then some of it was like modern CGI of it. They tried to almost make it look stop motion by like reducing the frames or it almost, it just, it just felt like low budget CGI, which for a hundred thousand, this is a hundred million. This is like expendables dollars. It's not low budget. They should be able to do better. Uh, pacing's insane, but going down darker path with body horror and dark sense of humor helps it become contemporary. Jenna fits perfectly. Michael Keaton's incredible. Um, and some of the practical effects are generally beautiful. So I think there are still things to love in this and I'm not mad that it exists. Hmm. It doesn't, doesn't feel like a, just a cash grab like a lot of other sequels and remakes feel like. Yep. Um, I'm not mad about it. It's fair. You're right. Was, it's not near as good as it first. I was disappointed though. Like I was expecting a really good time. Like I still enjoyed it, but I was like, mm. oh, you just thrown a stack of stuff at me. And yeah. it's not, it's not, it's not what I wanted. I wanted Beetlejuice Chaos. And you gave me six or seven different stories all into one in like 37 minutes. Yep. So yep. It's not as cohesive as the first. No. Uh, but still for me, it's still a three. I, yeah, look, I'm conflicted. I I think it's a I think it's a three because I still would recommend it to people, but like, it's, I've got a bit of a sour taste, and it's like two point five. But I think it's a three. Yeah, I can I can sort of see arguments for both. Yeah, and I know I, that like if you're a big fucking juice head, and you're hmm. you're obsessed with the original, not that juice head. Though. Um, not that juice head, but that juice head. <laughs> uh, then. You're probably gonna froth this, and it's bringing a lot of things you're gonna love because there's a lot of little like, like seeing the sandworm again. There's a lot of little nods to the original mm. that I think work really well. But if you're watching this, you know, for someone who doesn't really give a shit about the series, there's a lot to poke at as well. Yeah, so it's right yeah. around that high twos to low three sort of area. Yeah, yep. True, true, true. Yep, as yeah. there are. Let's get into Chelsea King. I finally have been able to pronounce it correctly. It's taken me a long time because <laughs> when we first picked it, I had no idea. No, and... but now you've heard it a few times because you've watched a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, i got to hear it before I can do it. But mm-hmm. this is Sylvester Stallone's newest, uh, newest one. 
and he is playing a gangster. So he's following his release from prison, Mafia Capo Dwight, the general man, Freddy, is exiled to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he builds a new criminal empire with a group of unlikely characters. So Sylvester Stallone is pretty much playing Sylvester Stallone. And i got to say, I got absolutely hooked on it. And I did a Lawson and I actually watched the entire season. Like I didn't watch Impressed. anything else. I went and just continued to watch it. Like they're yep. 30 odd minutes a piece, like almost to 40 Yeah, 45 minutes. something. Yeah. Which reminds me of, it reminded me a little bit, obviously with less comedy with weeds. Like do you remember the show Weeds? Yeah, but I don't see the connection. Oh, just in terms of like back in the day, Weeds was like that 30 minute episode format where it was like it was longer yeah, than a lot of shows are <laughs> breaking bad is like a lot yeah. of shows are now now they are but back in the day like it was either a 40 minute episode or it was like your 20 minute sitcom sort of episode and then weeds came out and it was like hbo's push and they were like 30 minutes for whatever reason i, I didn't watch many shows that had the 30 these minute are, these button. are these are 40 minutes. They're like 35-ish minutes. Fucking go jump on um, <laughs> Amazon right now and, and correct yourself. Oh, well, fine. Look, uh, it's on Par- Paramount Plus original. So yeah, Paramount Plus have uh, been coming out with some banging stuff at the moment. They've dropped Halo and now they're bringing out Tulsa King and the new uh, season that comes out tomorrow. So a couple of episodes come out tomorrow. So Sylvester Stallone, Dwight, has is part of the Mafia gang and he's in jail for 25 years and did not give up his, con, like he wasn't a snitch. So he had yeah. a an attempt on his life in prison because they're like, no one serves 25 years and doesn't talk. But he did not talk. And then when he gets out, his his crew or family, the mafia family, he's really close with the head of the family who's in poor health and the son wants to obviously take the range but has to, like, look after the father because whatnot, which is... I've seen him before. He's in a number of things. Where have I seen him? Yeah. Where was the son? He's in... I I didn't recognise him at all. I have no idea. I'm trying to. I'll have he, a look. he looks like the guy who plays Samwise in Lord of the Rings. That's oh. what I thought. That's what I thought he was at first, but it's not him. It's not him. Okay, maybe maybe I'm no. confused. But yeah, like it's running your stereotypical mafia family. Like you got to look after the family. He gets exiled mm-hmm. to uh, Tulsa just to move him away, so that he can't take it over because the father has like him in very high regard. And is always comparing the son to to Dwight, which causes some conflict down the road. But we get to see Dwight build up a mafia crew, which is like a ragtag mafia crew, and they make they poke fun at it because the mafia the the head mafia crew that are back in the the original place are like it's like the the YMCA picking him up because he meets the the taxi driver when he first gets to Oklahoma, takes him on as a driver, and then he gets all sorts of different people as he creates his crew in Tulsa. So he has to like establish the mafia in Tulsa where there's only a biking crew and that causes some conflicts yeah, yeah. as well. But I really like Sylvester Stallone as a gangster. Like he's old, he's old now. Yeah. And he moves like an old guy, but he still has the presence. So there's like some fight scenes and I'm like, you move like an old man. Like <laughs> you, you yeah. can't, you can't get I around. I think he moves it. better than, uh, I think he still moves better than Arnie at this point. Uh, look, I think Sylvester Stallone does like continue to train and he's like still pretty active. Arnie yep. just Arnie was different. Well, Sylvester Stallone and Arnie were different though. Sylvester Stallone was like more big, bigger stunts. Like he was running around being Rambo, doing like more of an active yeah. role. Where Arnie yeah. was just like obviously a bodybuilder, like as massive as big a mass as you can get. So 
Well, they move different. Um, obviously, you got Rocky, so he trained to like fight and stuff. So he's got he's got that movement still, a little bit of his movement pattern. So they're a little bit different characters. But I really liked seeing Sylvester Stallone as the mafia coming in, extorting this. Um, Did I? Uh, like he's coming to twenty five years later, and it's him like fish out of water. Like these are the old ways, and yeah, him interacting with the new way. Like because weed is legal in Tulsa, and he walks into like the uh, what are they called? Like the weed dis- dispensary. Dispensary, and he's yep. <laughs> and like extorts him, and he's just yeah, straight <laughs> just- up. Just walks in, he's like, "Give me your cash." <laughs> he beats up people. And... Yeah, I need to see your books, and they're just like, "Okay." Like, <laughs> he throws a water bottle, and knocks out the security guard. Yeah, it's just it's. I find it so funny. There's even points where they're like, "Oh, you can use that on the app, or you need to get a, a bank card." <laughs> like, yeah, what? <laughs> Pay somebody else. <laughs> cash is king. Yeah. <laughs> I I thoroughly enjoyed watching his interactions with the old yeah. mafia style into the, the the new world or the modern day world, mm-hmm. and, and like, someone who's been in jail and, and missed out on technolo- technological advancements in the last twenty five years. Yeah, and like seeing the introduction of like crypto and all sorts of mm-hmm. different things coming in, and they're like, "Oh, how are you going to pay for this cash?" <laughs> He's like, oh, oh. sorry, I take a credit card. You know, some <laughs> randoms like, can I pay you to use your credit card? <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's just so many things that are happening. And it's just, it's really, I found it a really fun ride. And I'm hoping that you enjoy it, it as well. Yeah, yeah. I watched five episodes today. Yeah. And they um, they, they move they're pretty, pretty well. easy. Yeah. But pacing wise, it's pretty cruisy. Like, he has a daughter that he's missed out on. He's had a marriage breakdown because he was in for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants to reconnect with his daughter, but his daughter doesn't want anything to do with him. Yeah. There is a point further down the storyline, which I don't want to get into into it with you because you haven't watched it yet. Yeah. And I'm hoping, I will. You're, hoping you're gonna watch the rest of it. But like there's lots of moving parts. There's lots of like it's not a massive cast. Like this, it's quite a, a reasonably small cast. You do have your standard like police fraternizing with gangsters. Like there's a whole yeah, there are some like, tropes. There's certain there certainly are some tropes. Yeah, but I don't think you can get away from tropes much these days. Like there's always going to be bits and pieces of tropes in there. Yeah, I think when you like this is not a new story by any means. I mean, look, him building uh, his own mafia in Tulsa is a new story. Uh, but, you know, we've seen mob movies and TV shows and, you know, one of one of the best TV shows ever made, uh, Sopranos, is about a crime family, the crime family uh, in New York and stuff. So, like, you know, we're used to this stuff. And there's always going to be a little bit here and there where they're feeding the same sort of tropes, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, I don't think it makes it any worse. No, like it's it's fun, and the, the ragtag crew that he actually does assemble. Like I've lost track of yeah, where yeah. everything is. But have you seen the conflict between them and the biker gang yet? Yeah, like, that was last episode, I think. Is that the one at the fair? Yeah, they, yeah. Yep. Where they roll where, up? Yeah, yeah. Where um, is it Tyson? The, the driver, his dad yep. joins in. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> so fucking weird, but my enemy's enemy is my friend. So, yeah. Yeah. They're like, that's just, it's, I found it so interesting just seeing a ragtag mafia crew assemble rather yep. than like your stereotypical, we are family, blah, blah, blah. Like, we've already yeah, yeah, established, yeah. like, you're in this crew where he's like, he's starting afresh. He's just mm-hmm. taking on whoever he's got. <laughs> there's a level of fantasy to it as well yeah like i don't think that someone would just walk into a a city with i looked it up there's like half a million people there walk into a city and just take over like the way that he is but you know who cares (laughs) it's like it's it's fun like i've been like i've been watching a lot of sopranos recently i'm i'm up to season four like i nearly nearly finished season four in six seasons uh and watching this i was like well you know, it is is this gonna just make me want to go watch more Sopranos? Because obviously it's you know a lot of similar themes. 
Um, and Sopranos is better. Like, don't get me wrong, of course, but this is probably like an easier ride because Sopranos has like got some quite heavy, like morality stuff, and it's got some heavy stuff around like family and he has to kill his friends and stuff. And that's what it's, like. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of heavier themes, I suppose, in Sopranos. Whereas this is like, this is like Sherlock level of fun, where we just get to see someone be like really good at what they do and just like break the system and take yeah. advantage of everyone. Yeah. There are some heavy themes that happen towards the end of the season, but it's like, it's sure. still, it's not to the point of Sopranos. Like I haven't seen mm-hmm. that much of Sopranos, but I have seen some episodes that are reasonably confronting. Yeah, for but, sure. Yeah. Like this, this is fun. Like oh, I was laughing a reasonable amount as well. At, like some of the, some of the points and some of the just randomness. Have you seen the horse mm-hmm. that's just randomly like, yeah, cruising it's like, around. Oh, just let it roam around. Okay, <laughs> it actually plays a bigger part, which is so bizarre. I'm assuming it would, otherwise, <laughs> it'd be more bizarre if it didn't. If it's just this fucking random horse in random scenes for no reason. Yeah, but I'm glad it comes back. <laughs> it does, but it's still random. Like the whole situation is, with the yeah. horse is pretty random, and like the the bloke that does the weed dispensary, I think it Bodie. Bodie. Yeah. yeah, like he actually he becomes quite a fun character as well. He's like the the Good. counter the counter opposite to everyone else. Right. So like Sylvester Stallone's obviously like your mafia boss. Then you've got Tyson, who's like the driver who wants to be really included. In uh-huh. it. Bodhi was like extorted and didn't want any part of it. Just wanted money. But then you're like, oh, you're actually you're an interesting kind of guy. Okay, because so far Bodhi is fuck yeah, all. Bodhi does nothing till probably the last three episodes, and you're like, oh, okay. okay, you're actually right, right. You're a fun, fun character. Um, then mm-hmm. you've got Stacy as well. She's the the police officer. Um, yeah, it's yeah, like, slash love interest. Yep. So, like, there's there's mo- moving parts. You've got some conflict between a few people. So uh, is it Armand or Armand, the the bloke that he knew when arriving at um, Tulsa, who was like making oh calls the one who him, tried like, killing him, yeah, 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 yeah. So he's like he's reoccurring. Um, you've got which is I think it's nice to have someone from his old life in Tulsa because I think a bit more than just Sylvester Stallone kicking ass taking names like having having another mafia guy there like. I think that, that he sort of needs that in terms of like, you know, story pacing and character development. Yeah. I'm going to say so, the, the, pa- glad. the pacing kept up and it, pretty it, good. Kept, it kept cruising all the way to end of episode nine. Like I was, I yep. was pretty hooked. I was like, no, nah, I got to see what happens. Yeah. Like, some shows when you go to watch three, you feel like a slog, but after three, I watched four instantly, especially knowing that you'd finished the whole season. I was like, well, I might as well keep watching. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty easy to watch. I've been watching back to back Sopranos or back to back Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And they're obviously very ends of very opposite ends of the extreme. This is like a nice happy middle right now. Like it's okay. a bit of funny moments. There's a few like heavier scenes and stuff, but it's still not as heavy as Sopranos. Um, it's not as good as either of those two shows, but it's pretty good. Like, yeah. I I liked it more than I guess I expected to. I don't love Sylvester Stallone. Ah, I think it's, I like can be quite two dimensional, but. It's fine. Yeah. He's it, it is actually my favorite role of his, I think, out of all the shit I've seen him in, which isn't heaps, but I like him in this. I think it really suits him. Yeah. I think he does really well in it. I have yeah. a, I've had a great time with it and I am pumped for tomorrow. So tomorrow morning I'm getting up and I'm watching Crystal Palace play because they play tonight <laughs> at eleven thirty. And then I'm okay. watching season two. Hell yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for you. He said a few episodes come out, so it's not the whole season at once. Um, I'm not sure. Let me let me check. Cause I'm not sure. I think they're doing a couple at a time. Um, no, no, they're doing weekly. Oh, weekly. So, okay. So, Sunday, September fifteenth comes out tomorrow, and then Sunday every Sunday. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I probably okay. like. I've only got. What four episodes left of this season? Yeah, which I can probably bash out 
in the next day or two, and then I'll be up to date and be able to watch it weekly. So it's been a while since I've watched a weekly show. Last time I watched was um, Shogun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. That's sick. Great show. I'm a top 10. Nice. Yeah, this is good. I like this. I had a good time. Um, what else is there to say, really? Yeah. It's what you expect out of it, I guess, but it's slightly better than just run of the mill that's versus Salone. Yeah, like it doesn't do anything wrong. It doesn't do anything incredibly well. It's just it's solidly entertaining. It I is. It's paced possible. well enough that like you're not bored. You you know, a lot's happening in five episodes, sort of thing. Yeah, and like it, it keeps it keeps cruising. Mm-hmm. It keep like I had a great time. It's a it's an easy four for me. Like I had a really good time. Yeah, I think four's accurate. Yeah. I think that's fair. Mm, three and a half to four. Four. Yeah, fuck it. Four. Yeah. Feeling good about it at the moment. Okay. Nice. Nice. And then let's jump into our last one, which is Netflix special, which is a four part series. It is Jack yeah. Whitehall, Fatherhood with My Father. So I watched all of the Jack Whitehall travel with my father. So I knew what I was in for. I'm also a father, so um this demog- well this show is originally targeted of like him becoming a father which is a it's an interesting concept and it is mm-hmm. relatable for a lot of people the first i remember you messaged me after the first episode and you're like um does this get better <laughs> you're like, I'm not I, the- I messaged you and said this isn't really aimed at me <laughs> no. like first episode is all about like being a dad and how st- stressful and scary it is and yeah. i don't know if i'm ready for this and i don't know, you know whatever else but then it just isn't anymore <laughs> they just go into they go they go they do whatever the fuck they want and they make some loose connection with being a dad yeah they go look That's... at ai robots and they're like oh she's gonna grow up in a world with ai so we have to go look at ai robots and they look at body modifications they're like oh by the time she grows up body modifications are gonna be like even crazy than they are now they just they just fucking shoehorn in all these ideas so they can go off and do random adventures. That's what I that's what I said to you. I'm like the first episode's focused on it, and then the others is like it's, it's, like said, it's just whatever. So this is obviously following Jack and his father Michael, who they're on a path of discovery and adventure ahead of Jack's impending fatherhood. So the first episode is all what you'd expect, like the empathy. Um, mm-hmm. suit like he wears the the pregnancy um yep. suit, yeah, and goes they out go to birthing classes with his father. Like his father's yep. a really old, um, pompous like like if you think of a a rich, it's, it's quite so, proper. That's the word I was gonna say. Like yeah, sophisticated sort of like no nonsense. This is the. This, yep. is, this is how you behave, etc. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. feels like a royal sort of thing. Like he's quite yeah. regal. Yeah, and he's like he's very direct as well. Like he's very blunt. Like I laugh at mm-hmm. quite a lot of his delivery and just seeing Jack. Yeah, yeah. Like intentionally set him up for poking him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jack's very um flamboyant and um, I laughed so much in episode three where they're like, oh, this is full of mass. <laughs> you can just breathe the masculinity in. And they're having a photo with the, the gun guys. It was like after the, did you, did you see? I episode? did, but I remember, I remember this. They're doing a I group. I checked fo- out. Oh, they're doing, a, <laughs> they're doing a group photo with all like the air rifles and it was like all the, the hoorah guys. And they were yeah, like yeah. all standing there posing. And he does the like the peace signs with the leg kick up, like real. <laughs> oh sure, yeah. Like, like I laughed, I laughed a lot at that one. I was very but, bored. Oh really? So the the first one is um, Jack getting ready for his his kid, and they it's, do yeah. The, the first episode's pre pre child. Yep, and they do the the electrodes and the stimulate the birth. Or simulate the uh-huh. birth. They do a birth class, mm-hmm. um, and the dad's like doesn't want a bar of it. He's out there reading the newspaper. They do the birthing classes. It's all bits and pieces. I was like, I giggled at the first episode, and I was like, oh, okay, yep, this is what I kind of expected. And I'm like, I'm hoping this isn't 
this for the whole time. And then yep. you go then you go into the second episode, and I was like, ooh, the first half of the um the second episode was pretty weak. I was like, oh, I'm pretty over this, like you seem tired. The they've robot had, stuff and yeah, yeah. They've had the baby, and then they're going into like body modifications and the robots, and I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Like there's a little cheap laughs here and there, like they're doing the body modifications. You see some body modifications. So like that's pretty interesting. Like in itself, yep. like I, I've never seen the the body modification stuff, and then he makes some jokes about getting the the car key inserted into his bum to open the car. I giggled, I giggled, but no, nah, wow, tough audience. I uh, the whole time I'm just getting annoyed. Oh, okay, because they like they're in birthing class, mm. and they're just joking and like whether it's it may not be a real birthing class with real people going there for birthing class could be, could be fucking extras paid paid actors but they're the whole time that they're there they're making jokes talking in the back like i'd be pissed off the whole time watching it i'm getting anxiety because i'm getting annoyed at how much they're talking and how much rest room was getting mad at them um and his inability to take like he's meant to be fun and whimsical but like you're having a fucking child and he's taking nothing seriously and like he talks about, oh, I don't think I'm ready for a kid, and I don't know, I don't know enough yet. And then he goes to birthing class, and the whole time he's there, he's taking the piss. It's like, do you care or not? Do you want to be a good dad? Maybe being a good dad isn't exploiting the birth of your child to make a TV show. Maybe that's how you be a good dad. Maybe maybe being a good dad isn't going to America four weeks after your child is born, so you can go film some random show. Maybe be a good dad by staying at home. No, the show pissed me off. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I I I don't agree with. Whether or not what scripted or not, I just found the whole thing annoying. Jack Whitehall pissed me off in this. I don't yeah. think he gets him prior, but in this, I'm like, what are you fucking doing? Do you do you care or not? There you go. I, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Sorry. So, <laughs> look, I I watched all the other ones. There were episode three, I was actually pissing myself laughing because it was him in a very oh the vault episode three was all about you need to be able to protect your family yeah 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 yep and they go to the The gun the the underground and then bunker they were like we're going to teach you how to shoot the gun which is very american which is i was like yeah that's that's fine and then they go and then we're going to do a simulation where you can go into what happens if your daughter's taken hostage and then it was like we're going to teach you hand-to-hand combat yeah, that was funny. Uh, oh, I lost it <laughs> to the point where he's they're in there shooting guns, and I'm like, yeah, cool, whatever. You're shooting guns. You you guys are fish out of water. But if you've ever been to Vietnam, you go to the Tu Chi tunnels, and they let you like pay money to shoot the guns. And there was this. I remember watching this little Japanese lady trying to shoot the M16, and like the M16 doesn't have massive kickback but for her because she was she would only been like 40 kilos like she it was not much of right. it she was shooting it and she had two of the like workers and the guards like one on each side like bracing her and because it was like jolting her yeah massively. yeah, yeah. And recoil. Seeing, yeah seeing the dad like <laughs> like he's a he's a frail man he's an old man yeah <laughs> like shooting this gun just like trigger happy <laughs> shooting it like it was, there were moments where I was like really laughing, and when they have to go into the simulation, <laughs> is the like where this the simulation of the hostage. So armed people have come in, they've taken the daughter hostage, and then they have to go into the simulation with the rifles. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and mm. the whole the whole time, the guys are like stop pointing the gun everywhere. Like he keeps pushing the the barrels down. Because they just keep like raising them up and like yeah, direct, of course. directing them towards people, and they're like, "No." <laughs> and the dad's like, "Take this!" and just starts like bashing the the target, and he's like, "No." <laughs> he's, he's just following him around, and then he shoots the bloke at the end. And he's like, "Did I have to keep shooting him?" <laughs> he says, "The bloke's on the ground." He's just like, "Yeah, he's on the ground. <laughs> he's fucking." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, there are moments. And then, but there are and then, moments when it's nothing to do with being a father. No, but episode three, I was actually almost in tears. Episode three is my favorite as well. Yeah, that's when, when they, they went do- to the underground vault, the big like bunker that guy had built. 
Yeah, but they're doing the self defense class, and he has to. The blokes are black belt in jujitsu, and they're like, "You have to come and like wrestle me." <laughs> and Jack's like, "Oh, I've gone last because you'll be tired." And then he's like, "Dad, help me!" So he's getting like manhandled, like yeah, he's yeah. Out, and he's just holding him. And the dad comes in, he's like, "Get out of him! Get off me! Yeah. You're just a bully!" Scolds him. Yeah. You're a bully. <laughs> Uh huh. There you go. Son walks off again, and then he's at he's in the guy's house later. He's <laughs> like, "Why is he there? Does he live there?" Like, <laughs> he's eating his cheese and crackers or whatever. He's just like free wine and cheese. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's just sitting. It's real weird. <laughs> he just sits there, just eating cheese for no reason. I don't understand. I also don't understand that bloke's philosophy where he's like, oh, like that toy gun that his kids had. Like they go to the oh, I know. house. I'm oh, like, I know. That looks like a real gun. And he's like, yeah. my, kid, my kids know. My kids real... know the difference between a gun and a toy. Yeah, he's but got they like, don't. And then he's got a like, what, a massive 50 cal rifle just laying on Whatever the ground. Whatever it is. Yeah. Like it, it was a big gun. Yeah, like, big yeah. fucking sniper or some shit. I don't know. They won't touch that. Was it? I'm pretty sure they do. I mean, it won't be loaded, but I think it's besides the point. Like, you're yeah, making but... guns feel like water bottles. Like, they're just sort of laying around the house, and I feel like it's not like respecting it as a weapon, you know? No. Things that are dangerous shouldn't be just laying around. I, th- I thought they would have had rules about that, though. But like, America, they have rules about anything. Are you allowed to just. Have it lying around the house? Guess so. It's why guns are in people's drawers and shit, and kids get them. And you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have any rules about like locking up their guns and shit. Yeah, right. I forget that. I know. Very loose laws. Like it's it's so, so bizarre. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. It's so backwards. Yeah. Well, like the episode three was really fun. One was what you expected. Two was average as. There's only one more. I'll probably watch it, but it'll just be like background nonsense. Yeah. It's not like it's not something I'm gonna tell people to go watch and enjoy because it's there's a couple funny moments here and there, but I just found it annoying. The tr- the travel like, ones are funnier. The I can travel. imagine it would be. And you can see they've tried to capture recapture that like that fun in this because it almost becomes like a travel show. Yeah. Oh, but, where they go? Where they go to the <laughs> the ceremony with the lady? Like they had to get swaddled. Oh, the spiritual woman <laughs> again, taking the piss. Like she's there doing her job and like trying to be all spiritual and help them out, and they're just giggling the whole time and like being dickheads and disrespectful. <laughs> it's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, but not to her. It's not fair that you take no. the piss like that, put her on fucking camera. She thinks she's doing the right thing. It is pretty windy and they're trying to throw the, the words into the fire. Yeah, yeah, kept blowing out. <laughs> <laughs> the old man just like putting random things. Like Jack did a, some sensible ones. He was like Yeah, yeah, yeah. His it, it gets the, the his guardian. Na- neighbors neighbor's friend and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. whole like the whole thing with the AI love interest thing felt so scripted and shit. That was scripted. That was that was a just was. for a joke. Yeah, same with the him throwing things in the fire that were like I don't think he wrote any of that. Yeah, I reckon. I don't know. No, a lot of it feels a lot of it feels scripted and silly. Yeah. And because he's such a, a dry witted old man, it's hard to tell with him when he's being sarcastic or scripted or. Like, I think it, it suits him to be a bit scripted. Like, how does a man of his age and wisdom know what a gooch is, but not a perineum? I think... Surely. Yeah, but because he's like that proper, he's like, oh, no, that's not my business. Yeah, but why why is he know the word gooch? My dad doesn't know the word gooch. <laughs> gooch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I uh, yeah, I don't know. Funny though, I laughed at nah, it. There are moments, but it's not good. It's not as good. It just annoyed as me. It made, it made me just yeah frustrated, and I don't think like I don't know how much of it is like he he really is a dad of only four weeks when he's off doing stuff and whatever. But uh, I, don't know. Look, I, no, I don't know. There might have been like 
they recorded this while she was pregnant and they were just like, oh, we'll say this. Yeah, we'll say it's a dad now and stuff. Yeah, definitely yeah. could have been. I don't know. I don't to know. me, it just feels like exploitative and and bad parenting in a lot of aspects, <laughs> but it's whatever. It's not my kid. Yeah, I don't know. I laughed at it. I, I did like they went to the fallout shelter. That one guy's like, you know, he built that multi-leveled fucking... And Jack was like, I mean, he said, oh, this, this is where you have the, the, the jailhouse. And Jack's like, oh, so you have a court then? And he's like, no, what do we need a court for? And he's like, well, how do you decide who goes to jail? And he's like, well, if they've been if they've been naughty, then they go to adult timeout. Jack's like, <laughs> there's a bit of a pause. And it's like, but who decides that? <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's a democracy. It's like, what? It's, it's, it's interesting that American fucking gun-toting idiots, like, don't see how... Yeah, you can have a jail, but not a court. Like, it's such a fucking American mentality. You don't need to have a court to prove who did it. Just throw them in jail. Yep. I guess it would turn into, like, a hierarchy, wouldn't it? Just whoever... Yeah. Whoever well, Jack made that joke about the, the inevitable downfall after a few years, everyone go crazy, and there'd be an uprising, and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's 100% true. Like, the entire Fallout universe is built on that idea that you can't keep 200 people inside a fucking contained area without some sort of power and balance and some sort yep. of chaos. Uh, but yeah, this wasn't for me. Uh, the first episode wasn't for me because I'm not a, not a dad and never will be and couldn't connect. And the rest of it wasn't for me because I didn't find any of it funny yeah. or like very little. Yeah. Look, I still enjoyed it. It's, it's not as good as the good. travel. The, the travel is good. It's like, sure. it's like a two on this one like right episode on. episode two sucked episode one was what you expected like there was some cheap laughs at what you expect and like going through the birthing class and stuff for a weird experience like it's it's pretty bizarre uh but episode three loved it loved episode <laughs> three <laughs> it's the better one yeah yeah like i had a good, really good laugh but yeah it's disappointing watch the travel with my father instead if you want to see that there interaction go. good recommendation it's a yeah. one from me yeah fair well we have a lineup for you next week we have a speaking of ai love interests we have a yes subservient which is megan fox's newest one she's the ai love interest who is going to be on the screen near you soon that's a rhyme and pick Wonder why. <laughs> and then it's the weirdest way you could have said that. <laughs> I don't know. No. And then we've got Zack Snyder because we've watched a lot of Zack Snyder's ones, and mm-hmm. I want, I'm hoping, I'm hoping he's on the right track again because he did a really good edit of the Ju- uh, Justice League, and then Rebel Moon sucked, and then yep. he's now got Twilight of the Gods, which is an adult, uh, what's it called animation. Which yeah, it's pretty cool. Norse mythology, so should be interesting. And then we've yep. got the newest. I love Norse mythology, so I'm down. Okay, cool. And then we've got the newest Blumhouse horror movie, which is Speak No Evil. Mm-hmm. Bom, bom, bom. James McAvoy. Yeah, we know he plays he he plays crazy and scary pretty pretty well. Yep. So they are going heavy on advertisements for this one. So we'll it, it sounds a lot, a lot like The Shining, like this the the plot that I read and like the images I've seen is very Shining esque. Okay. So I guess we'll see. But... Was was Blumhouse Megan with the three and also Night Swim? Yes, and yeah, and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, they all went the crap heavy. We watched. They went heavy with the advertisement for them too. So I'm hoping yeah. it's hoping it's better than those two. But I always say that, like, the whole Blumhouse thing doesn't mean good or bad anymore. Like, uh, I mentioned to you in the in our break that one of our favorite movies of the the past decade, um, Whiplash, is Blumhouse. Mm. Whiplash is like genuinely a masterpiece. Yeah. Right. So like, he can make good shit. It's just you know the whole mentality of throw shit at the wall. So speaking of evil, could be great. I've heard it's slightly above average, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, 
You know what to do. If you're listening on Spotify, make sure you give us a five-star rating. Share it on the socials. Let us know. And if you're listening on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. Tell them all. Tell your friends. Tell them all. Tell Tell all your friends. And let us know if you think the energy is different. We're recording on a Saturday night. I've had two sides. Yeah. And true. Yeah. You have had two sides. <laughs> You're ticking. <laughs> I've had sombreros and vanilla Pepsi. Vanilla Pepsi. Are you are, nice. you on, are you on the Coke or the Pepsi train? Which one? Are you on Oh uh, whatever one is available, I don't really care. Okay. I know they, they taste different, but I don't have them enough to give a shit. Do you I'm know not you... fucking elitist one or the other. Yeah, right. Do you know Pepsi and Coke put their vending machines next to each other because the psychology behind it is instead of just having thinking of, oh, I could have a Coke, it's like, which one am I going to choose? Which is, yeah, I've hmm. heard. I didn't know that, but I also don't partake in either of them. No, no. it's very rare for me. If I go to get like a meal, I'll get a drink. Or if I eat pizza, I've got to have soft drink with pizza. I can't yeah. not. They, they go, you know, they're so perfect together. Yeah, right. But I have those bubbles. Really? Couldn't you just go soda water? I like soda water. Really? No. It just mm. tastes like tingles. I love soda water. Nah, not a fan. I drink like four a day. Soda water. Really? Yeah. I drink water. <laughs> if I'm going to drink soda water, I'll drink water. If I want to drink like, soda, I'll drink soft drink. I like the bubbles on my nose. <clears throat> I guess. Mm. For you, that makes sense because you won't drink soft drink or whatever. Mm. I like Pepsi better than Coke, though. Yeah, I don't care. Mm. Just letting you know. to me. Mm. No, I'm not saying I don't care about you. I just don't care about the difference. (laughs) (laughs) Just letting you know. My my wife will not drink Pepsi ever. Really? But, like, I know people who who as well who who wouldn't drink Coke. Yeah, right. There's also... Yeah, right. There's uh, Coke Zero Oreos out at the moment. Oh, really? That sounds cool. Mm. Mm. They're on board. Okay. All right, I'll look into that. Let me know what you think. They're sure, just we'll stand, do. standard Oreos with Coca Cola powder added into it, and they've got the Coca Cola thing in the top of the Oreo. Wait, is it Oreo Coke or Coke Oreos? Oreos, like the biscuit with Coke powder in it. Oh, I thought you meant it was a, a drink, that got drink that had Oreos in it. But they got a drink too, but I don't think it has actual Oreos in it. But is it taste like Oreos? Is there an Oreo Coke? I didn't or eat is it. it Coke Oreos? I didn't drink it. They're both. Is it the biscuit or the drink? There's both. Oh, there's I both. Don't... Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant. I thought uh, you meant there was only one, but there's both. Okay, there's I'm both. gonna get both. I'm gonna get yeah. both and report back. Yeah. Right. Tell us next week. All right. We'll do. Tell your friends. Tell them all. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See ya.